scheduling and admission control office. And uh, packet scheduling basically refers to this, the decision process used to choose which packet should be serviced and which one should be dropped. In order to do this, we have something known as packet scheduling acronym. And these are acronyms that allocate router resources among the packets of a flow between and other key flows. And there are three different resources used to reserve different flows. The first one being bandwidth, the second is buffer space, and the third one is CPU cycles. Going back to packet schedule, the first one is FIFO or first in and first out. Just like the name implies, it's basically the oldest entry of the queue is processed first. It is simple to implement, but isn't suited to provide good quality of service when there are multiple flows. Another flaw is that, they, is that there's an aggressive sender, it can have most of the capacity of the routers, its package server, starving the other flows and reduce their quality of service. The next, uh, the next packet scheduled algorithm is spare queuing. Now, the essence of this algorithm is that routers have separate queues, one for each flow for a given output line. When the line comes idle, the router scans the queues around Robin. It then takes the first packet on the next queue. And this, is, in this way, with eight hosts competing for the output line, each host gets to send one out of every end packet. Just like the name implies, it is fair in the sense that all flows get to send packets at the same time. However, a flaw with this with pair queuing is that it gives more bandwidth to hosts that use larger packets than to hosts that use smaller packets. And I guess the, the last uh, packet schedule I remember that I'm going to talk about is priority scheduling. And basically with priority scheduling is that each packet is marked a priority. High priority packets are always sent before any low priority packets. Once again, it has one flaw is that one flaw with it is that a burst of high priority packets can start low priority packets, which may have to wait indefinitely. Now going on to mission control. Basically, a mission control is a process and communication system where a check is performed before a connection is established to see if the current resources are sufficient for the proposed connection. They do this by flow spec spec specifications. Because many parties may be involved in the flow negotiation, that being sender, receiver, and all routers between them, flows must be described accurately in terms of specific parameters that can be negotiated. And I guess going into further detail with flow specifications is that typically the sender produces a, a flow specification proposing the parameters it would like to use. As the, as the specification propagates along their route, each router examines and modifies the parameter as needed. These modifications can only reduce the flow, but they cannot re decrease it. And this is just an example of a uh, flow specification. Does anyone know what a token bucket is? If not, that's fine. Uh, token bucket is basically a measure of the unevenness of variations in traffic flow. Now, as you can see, there are five different parameters in this game. That being token, you know, two being token, well, token bucket rate, token bucket size, peak data rate, minimum packet size, and maximum packet size. The first two use token buckets to give the maximum sustained rate the sender may transmit, average over a long peer, time period. The third, uh, the third uh, parameter being peak data rate is the maximum transmission rate tolerated even for brief time intervals. It is important that the sender never exceed the rate even during a brief, these brief bursts. And the last two, just specify the minimum and, ma and maximum packet size that can be sent 